Good evening on this Friday. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Natalie Pascarella. Right now we're waiting for an update from President Trump and the White House Coronavirus Task Force. It's expected to focus on testing and doing a lot more of it across the board. We, of course, will listen in and bring you any important updates. Here in New York, in about two hours, a statewide mandate will go into effect. All New Yorkers have to wear a face covering if social distancing isn't possible. Next month, all non-essential events like concerts are canceled. June events also in jeopardy, but they're not canceled just yet. This all comes as new numbers show the deadly toll this virus is taking on nursing homes in New York. More than 1,000, most of those in our area. Queens is reporting the highest number in the state. And here are the latest numbers of cases and deaths in the tri-state. More than 320,000 people have tested positive with 17,698 deaths. News 4's Andrew Siff live in Flushing. Queens with the New York fight for progress amid so much tragedy, Andrew. Hi, Natalie. Yeah, here the Sapphire Nursing Home here in Flushing, at least 26 reported deaths so far, and that pales in comparison to some other nursing homes in New York City. The new numbers out today, and for now, the governor says these totals are tragically unavoidable. Chopper 4 above the Cobble Hill Health Center, where 55 residents of the nursing home have died from coronavirus. Nursing homes are the vulnerable point. And Governor Cuomo acknowledging today the terrible toll at nursing homes across the state. In the Bronx at Kings Harbor, 45 deaths. In Queens, the Franklin Center, 44 deaths. And on Staten Island, Carmel Richmond, 44 deaths. The CEO of the Nursing Home Association told News 4 outbreaks are not the result of inattentiveness or a shortcoming in our facilities. The very nature of long term care is a high touch environment where social distancing is not an option. The governor said without federally led testing, he can't protect this aging population. It's not an inspection issue. We've taken radical measures vis a vis a nursing home. No visitors. I mean, just think about how harsh a policy that is. The grim news about the spread of COVID-19 arrives on a day when New York must obey new rules, mandatory masks at grocery stores. So we have to tell them, listen, you have to wear a mask to be in the store. Some people get very upset over that. Ian Joskowitz is chief operating officer at Westside Market. He said he spent $16,000 at this Morningside Heights store to buy personal protective gear. It's all essential. I always knew that, obviously, because we all have to eat to survive. But now I think everyone realizes. And New York is now realizing the coronavirus rules may last a long time. City pools shut down this summer. Beaches unlikely to open. The Brooklyn Half Marathon set for May 16th canceled. The Pride Parade set for June 28th. The mayor said he's talking it over with organizers. Is there any scenario, for example, where the Pride Parade takes place? We cannot allow the disease to boomerang back. So... I don't see it for June, but we're going to have the conversation carefully and then have an announcement real soon. One other note on the nursing homes. The secretary to the governor said many of them were failing to meet a requirement that they update families on the condition of their loved one and whether there are any COVID-19 cases inside. She said by executive order, those nursing homes could be fined for not revealing information. Live in Flushing, Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. All right, Andrew, thank you. Well, tonight, reporters will likely ask the president about his clash with Governor Cuomo over the coronavirus response, a war of words that happened in real time. It's all started with this tweet from President Trump during Governor Cuomo's daily briefing, saying the governor should spend more time doing and less time complaining. Well, then came the fireworks. News 4 government affairs reporter Melissa Russo live in our newsroom to break it down. Hi, Melissa. Hi, Natalie. You know, Governor Cuomo has really tried to use public praise as a strategy to get what New York needs from this president. But today, Governor Cuomo launched into a calm but brutal nine-minute tirade about Trump. What am I supposed to do, send a bouquet of flowers? Pushing back at a tweet from President Trump, posted while Governor Cuomo was live on TV. The tweet accused the governor of failing to say thank you for federal help. Thank you for having the federal government participate in a federal emergency. 
which, by the way, is just doing your job as president. It's not really thank you like you wrote a check yourself, but thank you. The president was apparently irked by Cuomo's briefing today, saying Cuomo should spend more time doing and less time complaining. Get out there and get the job done. Stop talking. First of all, if he's sitting home watching TV, maybe he should get up and go to work, right? Trump said, we built you thousands of hospital beds that you didn't need or use, gave large numbers of ventilators that you should have had, and helped you with testing that you should be doing. I needed a stockpile? Where was your stockpile? 10,000 ventilators for the nation? That was your stockpile? The president tweeted back, saying Cuomo ridiculously wanted 40,000 ventilators. We gave him a small fraction of that number, and it was plenty. The governor also said Trump is refusing to help states with testing and mocked the president for flip-flopping, initially saying he had total authority over reopening, then saying it's up to the governors. The only thing he's doing, let's be honest, well, it's up to the states to do reopen. By the way, it was always up, up to the states. What are you going to grant me what the Constitution gave me before you were born? It's called the Tenth Amendment. I didn't need the president of the United States to tell me that I'm governor. And I didn't need the president of the United States to tell me uh, the powers of a state. In a series of earlier tweets, Trump also called on his supporters to liberate Minnesota, Michigan, and Virginia, all three swing states with Democratic governors where there have been protests calling for stay-at-home orders to be lifted. Today, Cuomo's top aide promoted the governor's comments about Trump as the nine-minute response every American should watch. But if praising the president was key to getting federal aid, it's not clear where Cuomo's response today leaves New York now. Natalie? All right, we'll have to wait and see in the briefing. Melissa, thank you. Now to New Jersey, where we know sadly another 3,200 people have been diagnosed with the virus in 24 hours. 323 more people have died. That pushes the number of deaths to 3,840. And one of those was Newark police officer Daniel Francis, a criminal intelligence analyst. He died this week from COVID-19, and he received a hero's send-off today. Meanwhile, in Hoboken, new rapid testing is now available at Riverside Medical. The testing kits allow patients to get their results in just 15 minutes. On testing across the state, there are now 70 sites at which you can receive a COVID-19 test if you are exhibiting symptoms of respiratory illnesses. Well, the nursing home that had one of the state's first outbreaks is back open today. The scene is a stark contrast from what we witnessed three weeks ago there in Woodbridge as residents were being removed one by one. They were taken to a home about 30 miles away while St. Joseph's underwent some intense cleaning and while the staffers recovered. We know that at least 14 residents died. Let's get you to the latest numbers now out of Connecticut tonight. Governor Lamont announcing 925 new COVID-19 cases and 65 new deaths. That's a total of 1,036 deaths. Now, this shows the major impact this pandemic is having on New York families. If you take a second and look at your screen, for 10 blocks or more, Thousands of people lined up. They were waiting hours for food there in Corona, Queens. News 4's Rana Novini live there. Rana with the struggle for people to keep food on their tables. Yeah, Natalie, it has been such a struggle for so many families here in Corona, so much so that thousands of families are willing to wait in line all day just for the chance to get some groceries. Wrapped around and around the streets of Corona, Queens. I've never seen a line like that in my life. There's no telling where the line begins, but everyone knows where it ends. It ends with food, a bag of groceries meant to last three days, and thousands of people are waiting for it for hours. I waited for two hours. Like three hours, I think. Catholic Charities is running this pop-up food pantry in Corona, a community disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and the ensuing food crisis. We need help from everyone at all levels. Richard Slyzeski with Catholic Charities points out many here are undocumented. They won't be receiving stimulus checks or unemployment benefits. We serve everyone and anyone. 
And that's what we're trying to, to make a statement about that, that we're here for everyone. You don't have job, no, no have food, no, nothing. The pantry is handing out about 8,000 meals, but still it's not enough. Some are elderly, some stop to rest or to pray. Some are sick themselves or caring for a sick relative. This man tells me through tears that his mother is ill. And then there's health concerns for even waiting in line. This woman says she's grateful to get help, but wishes the line was more orderly and socially distanced. But there's no other choice. Not waiting means no food. And even that is not guaranteed. And the Catholic Charities pop up pantry here stayed open much later than it intended to. It was open until three volunteers trying to give food and resources, a list of resources to as many people as they could. But ultimately, some people, after waiting here for hours, were turned away empty handed. Reporting live in Corona, Rana Novini, News 4, New York. All right, Rana, we thank you for that report there.